Okay, so this is what we're gonna go. We're gonna be talking about starting the business in 2024. Plus there's gonna be some new training that will be affordable and there'll be more on time and it will include credit repair. So go below, get on the email list. And for the people who are interested in this, I will be putting up a webinar and I'll let you know. So let's go ahead and get into this video. This is what I want you to do. And we're gonna be doing two different things. Let's say the Hustlers Kung Fu channel will be for advanced business owners. And let's say this channel will be for beginning business owners. So go below, subscribe to Hustlers Kung Fu, and then watch the next video. All right, let's kind of get into starting a business. And one of the things I wanna do is use a failed business so I can illustrate to you the things that you need to do to start a successful business. As many of you know, I had a car rental business. And one of the things I did is I sat down and I actually did projections and calculations. The car rental business, my original plan was to run the business and operate the business and not pull money out of the business for um, about two years. Go ahead, get it up running, get it generating revenue. And this was the plan. And, you know, one of the issues I ran into is I was looking for accurate information here online. I was looking for information that would tell me the things I needed to do to run a car rental business. And literally, I could not find videos talking about true customer behavior. So I decided to go out and buy some cars and start renting cars so I can buy my information. And that was my first mistake because once again, you know, on paper, the projections look good. Let me explain to you my, my plan. My plan was to start the rental company, car company up, not take any money out of it and literally run it for two years and get it to the point where this business was making about $150,000 a month. And then at this point, uh, this was the plan, rent the cars for about two years then go ahead and sell a car two years later. And this is why I was looking at getting my auto dealer's license and my car look, because essentially I would buy cars every month, then I would sell cars. And about the two year mark, I would be buying cars at the auction and then I'd be selling cars on my, light, on my lot. So based upon my numbers, the projections look crazy because I was like, man, you know, I could be making like 100K a month, right? And, you know, the, the math work, the, the rental of the cars, I had information on how much I could rent the cars for. So I knew all that. Now, this is the thing that killed the car rental business, customer behavior. That was the thing that I was looking for with actually getting in that business. And this, this is why when I decided to buy my information, and this is why I was in and out of the car rental business so quickly, was number one, I was well capitalized. I had the money to buy a bunch of cars. And, you know, I was just literally getting into it because, you know, based upon the paperwork and the business plan, it looked really, really good. It looked great. But the practical reality, let's call the business plan, the projections, the fantasy of car rental. Let's call it the fantasy, right? And then once I got into it, I met the reality of car rental. And the things that happened just literally blew my mind. I, as a person, had no understanding that someone would take my car, keep my car, not pay me, refused to get in contact with me and keep driving my car. I, I did not, because as a person who has rented cars, it has never occurred to me to do that. I've never, you know, all the cars that I've rented from Hertz and Avis, I took back to the dealership in really good condition. Never had any issues, right? So this is where the reality of who I am as a person did not apply to the car rental business at all. Because I literally, I had about 11 cars and this is the first time someone had a car, stopped paying and refused to bring it back. And literally, I had to go pick this car up at a hotel. 
Once again, I'm going to make a little detour. Hotels. Anyone staying in the hotel that was renting my car, it was not a matter of if they were going to be late. It was a matter of when they were going to be late. So went through that. And what did I do? I kept buying more cars. I kept buying more cars. I kept renting more cars. And then when I had 31 cars and I was doing Toro, I was renting on car, Toro and I was renting on hire car. And because I wasn't close to the airport, I really, really didn't do well with Toro. I had one gentleman who rented the Mercedes like six times. You know, every time he came in town, he got the Mercedes. You want to know why the Mercedes was available? And I had this couple that rolled into town and they literally had luggage. It, it was just wild. It was just wild. But the, and I was renting on Toro and Hire Car. So because I didn't rent that many cars out on Toro, I never had a Toro car accident. I never had any issues. I never had to file any claims with Toro. So, but once again, the majority of my rental contracts were coming from hire car. And this is where I ran into the most problems. Cause once again, when I was doing my projections and stuff, the numbers look good. The numbers look great, right? But the reality of car rental businesses, and this is when the reality started to creep in this is when the reality when i had my first wrecked car and then literally three weeks later i had my second wrecked car and then in one week i had three cars wrecked and at one point i went to my office and i was looking because literally uh fortunately for me the office complex i was renting did not lose their mind because at one point i had 12 wrecked cars lined up in the parking lot and i only had 31 so that meant only had 18 cars to rent and that was like really really scary in that that moment and that's when I realized that I was going to exit the car rental business because the thing is can you be successful in the car rental business yes you can and I'll talk about that in a minute but dealing with the number of issues with the car rental business um, the stolen cars, the number of stolen cars. Now, fortunately for me, I abided by the protocols and everything that was stolen or had an issue, I was able to resolve and get that fixed through insurance. So all my stolen cars, I got a check. And some of these cars, I actually got more money for them than what I paid for them because the car market was kind of crazy at that time. But once I started to get the actual customer behavior, that's that turned me off from the car rental business because people will steal your cars. I literally had someone steal a Porsche two days after they rented it. They went to Craigslist and they sold it two days after they were rented. So you've got people stealing your cars. You've got people renting your cars who are not paying you and absolutely refuse to bring your cars back. I filed 25 stolen car reports because that was the only way I can get my cars back. It got so bad, it got so bad that the Sandy Springs Police Department told me that they were not going to investigate my stolen cars because I was calling them so often. Because this, like, literally, this is what happened. Someone would literally rent a car, pay for a few days, and then get ghosted. They wouldn't respond, but they would keep driving that car. You want to know? You want to know how I know? Because everyone that got arrested was driving the car because it was a stolen car. And I was just sitting there like, and I would literally have to pay the tow yard for towing my car, then pick up my car. It, 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 was, it was crazy. And when I got that message from the Sandy Springs Police Department, that was the last day that I rented a car because I knew what's going to happen with customer behavior. I knew that if I kept renting cars, Someone's gonna rent a car, keep the car, not pay me. And the only way I can get my car back was file a police report. Ideally, with the majority of my cars, I got them back in two days after I filed that police report. But that was the only way I can get these people, the cars back from these people. And that was a huge part of the customer behavior that pulled me out of the car rental business. Because like I said, I don't operate like that. I would never go to Herbs or Avis and stuff and keep their car and drive it. And if you don't believe me, 
go ahead and go hurt having people arrested for stolen cars. They, they have that same issue. But here's the reason, and let's get back into having a successful car rental business. You need a ton of cars. If I wanted to spend three milli and go ahead and get my own lot and get staff and stuff, that business could have made money. But kind of going back to, I, I was just so turned off by the car rental business because of customer behavior. Customer behavior was absolutely terrible. It was terrible. So and I'm gonna tell you another reason why it was so hard to get accurate customer behavior. And this is something, uh, back in the day when I used to live in Sandy Springs and I used to go to Butler's Tires, that's where I got my rims for, I was in there looking at stuff and the guys were having the conversation about someone in Atlanta, Georgia, who was renting exotic cars. And they were talking about every week he had cars in there, Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff. They were in there because people would rent his cars and they didn't know how to drive them and they would wreck them. And I go to social media. This person never brought that up, never said anything about this. So I personally knew for a fact that there were people in the car rental business who were having massive issues and they were not bringing that to social media. On social media, it was all good. I personally knew this. And that's another thing that, you know, because at this point, I think I had already decided that I was out the car rental business. And at that point, I started selling cars and getting rid of them because the people on social media, you know, shout out to Kiki at the upgrade, shout out to Tony Closer. These guys are putting out real and relevant information. But until I put out the Kill Switch Chronicles, a lot of people weren't talking about the reality of the car rental business. And the reality is renting cars to people who cannot afford to buy the cars is a bad, bad situation. Bad, bad, just completely bad. So this is one of the reasons, because you know, it was very hard to get real information about the car rental business. So let's kind of go back to, you know, and I'll tell you why this business failed because I did not have an organic understanding of customer behavior. Didn't understand it, didn't know what I was getting myself into it. Like literally the stolen cars were the worst. Uh, someone stole the Porsche, the Range Rover. Let me tell you the story of the Range Rover. The Range Rover actually got a check for the Range Rover. It just disappeared. And guess what happened? After I got a check, to get the check for the Range Rover, I had to send the company the title. And the company, I paid like 15,000 for that Range Rover. And the company gave me, I believe 17,000. So actually I did pretty well with that Range Rover. And then like two years after that, I get a notice in my mail that the Range Rover has been towed. So I don't know what happened with that, but I didn't have the title. I got my money. I just walked away from it. I just completely walked away from it. So let's go ahead and talk about a successful business. All right, my first successful business here on YouTube was the Conundrum Publishing that was making money A to Z with self storage auctions. Why did that business do well? Number one, let's kind of go before we get into this. Years in, before I came to YouTube, I was in the upscale garage sale. That was my storage auction business. And we used to make money from eBay. We used to make money from Amazon. We made money from Craigslist. And then we had what was called the upscale garage sale, where I put signs out on uh, Mountain Industrial and drew, lead them to the warehouse. And we have a garage sale every week. And this literally, I had like 4,000 square feet where everything was a dollar. That section sometimes made like 12,000 bucks a weekend. So I was consistently writing Craigslist ads. This was the Craigslist marketing system that I developed. So for years and years and years, I was writing every day. So I developed a habit of writing. And from having a business that I knew I had to do things to get customers, when I came to YouTube, I knew that I had to do something to get customers. So I wrote the book, I did marketing, I put links out and everything. And literally 
three months after I started the YouTube channel, I started making money. And my first weekend, was it mind blowing money? No, it was not. I made $650. And then over about the next three months, that went up to about 2,500 bucks per month. And then it went up to maybe six, $7,000 per month and it kind of stayed there. And then my first year I made $62,000 a year. I was thrilled. But why did that business work? Number one, I knew that I had to do things. I knew I had to do things to get customers. I knew I had to promote the customers. I knew I needed websites. I already knew this. And more importantly, it only took me like three months to write the book because I was in the habit of writing every day. So this business dealt with what I knew that I had to do, right? And then, you know, customer behavior. People were gonna buy the book and they were gonna go to storage auctions. And then I had people leaving really good comments like, hey, I got your book, I went to the auction, I felt like I knew what I was doing, I bought some good units. So that reason that that business worked was I was doing things I already knew how to do. Now, many of you are falling into that trap of getting into a template business, your Toro, your, you know, and I see a lot of people pushing these businesses. I actually did some research on some social media personalities and you consistently see the same business models over. I think going to a bank, getting a business loan to get three or four cars for Toro is one of the worst things you can do because let me go ahead and give you a scenario. Let's say someone wrecks two of those cars. Guess what? You still gotta make those car payments even though those cars aren't making money. Even though they're not making money. So you see a lot of information out here by people who've never actually started a business and had to figure out ways how to get customers. And this is one of the things that seriously kills so many people. They don't know how to get customers. And one of the things we're going to do with this beginning training, because, you know, literally uh, I'm running ads and I'll actually show you, share the story with you, because let's go back to the first part of the video talking about customer behavior. So right now I'm running ads and a lot of people are answering the ads, but these people, once again, customer behavior, they have bad credit. They don't have a lot of money. I already know this. I know exactly what I'm dealing with. So I sat down and I need to talk to my ad guys today. But if we can get more of these people, and I know you're like, wait a minute, you can want more people with bad credit? You want more people with low income? Absolutely. Because um, I figured out a plan. If we can get more of those people and we make this program affordable and helpful and we get, you know, um, X amount of these people per week, this could become a profitable endeavor. Why does it? Because once again, I know what I'm dealing with. And this is the thing that kills you in business. When you're dealing with something in business and you don't know what you're dealing with, you have no clue about customer behavior. You have no clue to how these folks are gonna behave. So essentially what we're gonna be doing here on this channel, and yes, the name's gonna change. I haven't figured out what I'm gonna call it yet, but it's gonna be for beginners starting. And one of the things is it has to be cheap. I'm just going to say it has to be cheap because right now there's a lot of you out there who are good people. You're, you're not afraid to work hard. You're not afraid to do the things you need to do to actually get your business up, to actually start making money with your business. But you don't know about customer behavior. You have no clue about customer behavior and how people are going to act because literally there are some of you who've literally have these business ideas and these business plans in your mind for about three, four, five years. But here's the thing, without going back to the first part of the video, I had these great business plans on paper. The car rental business looked amazing. It was beautiful. But then I took that business plan. I bought cars and I actually exposed it to the marketplace. And the marketplace was just like, <laughs> oh, we got something for you. Let's go ahead and throw a little customer behavior in there. And that completely killed the car rental business. So there are many of you who are sitting on business plans. You have these ideas, you have these concepts, right? 
and you just don't know how the marketplace is going to respond to your business plan because you have not exposed your business plan to the marketplace. And let's go ahead and talk about the market. Marketplace doesn't care. Marketplace is like, like, I mean, seriously, you could own a business and your mother could die. You wake up in the morning, your father calls you and says, your mom died this morning. And you go to your business and you, you, you can put up a sign saying, hey, my mom died, I'm shutting down. And people are gonna be pissed. Cause it's like, you own a business, you're supposed to be open, you're supposed to be serving customers, right? Typically, people have empathy and they have great care, but the reality is your mom died, they want you to open up for business so you can serve their needs. That's the marketplace. It doesn't care if your mother died, it doesn't care if you're sick, and the marketplace is 100% honest. So until you expose your business plan to the marketplace, and you know, I, like literally uh, these people, they've got all these ideals and these concepts and they're going off of their written business plans with no concept of how this business is gonna perform when it hits the marketplace. I'm just sitting there like, uh huh. But once again, here's the thing. So we're gonna do some new training and it's going to be, in a, you know, I, once again, I'm going to pull from my ads and I'm going to make some assumptions. One of the things I consistently get is we cannot afford your courses. Why can't you afford my courses? Because to start a business, and once again, you need two to $5,000 availability to start a business today, two to $5,000. A lot of people just don't have that. And so one of the things that I am assuming, and I'll find out once I expose this to the marketplace, is that most of you guys do not have a lot of money. Most of you guys are working. Most of your money goes for you to live. So with this new training, it has to be affordable, has to be affordable, and it has to be something that you can do. And with this new training, uh, I haven't done the webinar, but I'm gonna do the webinar, and I'm gonna leave an email link in the comments section, an email link, so you can sign up for the email list. And once I get the webinar together, I will send you this email so that you can actually see the webinar and get into the new training. Number one, it has to be cheap. Number two, it has to be something you can do. So this is one of the things we're getting into because uh, one of the things I consistently see is people who are not actually in a position to make business startup moves because they don't have a firm understanding of what they're getting themselves into. And this is one of the things that the new training is gonna do. And also, once again, this is an assumption, I don't know, but honestly, I feel a lot of you have bad credit. So one of the things we're gonna do in this new training is credit repair. We're going to work on getting your credit. I'm going to teach you how to start a business and all this other stuff. So that link will be below and just go ahead, hit this in the comments. It'll be in the comments section. There'll be a link under the video. And these are the things that we're going to do to make you successful in the future. Because literally, um, you know, I saw a comment. How many people taking this training got rich? Okay. What did I tell you with my most successful business? How much money I made my first year? $62,000. My second year, $92,000 a year. So taking you through this process, there's layers. Uh, I, I'm gonna say it. You make 35K a year. You're sitting at home. What do you have that is in your mind that can make you a millionaire in a month or so? What do you have? Please put that in the comments. Please put that in the comments because Building a business is about layers and systems and doing certain things, right? So this is one of the things that we're going to get into in the new training as we talk about this. So this is something else. Um, probably going to put this at the beginning of the video to get a lot of more people into it. And then once I get the webinar and stuff together, I will let you guys see it. And one of the things that we're going to do is set this up. So we're gonna start doing credit repair. We're going to put this together. 
And this is one of the things that I consistently see. People will mention some stuff, but these people don't take action. If you're willing to take action, your life can change literally in three years. Once again, I said three years, not three weeks, not three months, but three years. All right, so the link will be below. Once again, go ahead, get in that link. And I've taken down a lot of the videos and we're getting into some new training. Okay, so this is what we're gonna go. We're gonna be talking about starting a business in 2024. Plus there's gonna be some new training that will be affordable and it'll be more on time and it will include credit repair. So go below, get on the email list. And for the people who are interested in this, I will be putting up a webinar and I'll let you know. So let's go ahead and get into this video.